ಸನ್ನವಧ್ಯಾಯ ಶಾಂತೆಯ ನಮಃ In South India, Hirumaya and his companions pay homage to a sacred tree. They are traditional healers who draw their inspiration and their livelihood from the surrounding forest. Healers like Hirumaya have used plant medicine through the centuries, and rituals like this in a sense affirm man's bond with nature. the source of our good health and well-being aloe vera for fevers and headaches amaltas for diabetes and arthritis bhuamla for jaundice karela for liver and skin diseases and so on this relationship with the plant world is well established every culture on earth has developed a stock of rituals and traditions based on the healing powers of its local flora Even today we rely on much of this herbal law not only in our use of common plants and household ingredients like neem or turmeric in our daily health and personal care routines but even in the realm of modern medicine pick up any drug at your local chemist and the chances are you'll find its origins in an old folk remedy in fact one in every four of the medicines we take contains active ingredients derived from plants at least 80% of the world's population depends on plant remedies to treat minor health problems rural families by and large are more likely to consult a local healer for their basic health needs than a recognized medical practitioner Yellamma for instance never gives her patients branded prescription drugs as they are expensive and for the most part beyond their reach. She and others like her depend traditionally on the herbs and trees that grow around them to heal and rejuvenate. So when Parvati's son developed a fever she consulted the women of her village and an ancient recipe that used the cooling extracts of aloe soon brought down her son's temperature for fevers we use the pulp of the vallakattali plant we use other plants for different ailments we don't have enough money to feed ourselves so how can we afford a doctor But it is not poverty alone that draws people to herbal remedies. Even among the affluent societies, a growing awareness of the adverse effects of synthetic chemicals is causing more and more people to switch to natural products. With wider acceptability and recognition within the established medical community, plant-based medicines could well provide a low-cost and easily accessible alternative to the developing world's present and future healthcare needs. Moreover the green movement for a more ecological and holistic lifestyle and a search for remedies for chronic ailments such as heart disease aids ulcers and so on have led to an increasing demand for alternative therapies based on natural products India has both the natural resources and the knowledge to meet this demand a biodiversity hotspot India is a rich and diverse resource base for pharmaceutical flora 50% of the world's known plant species are found in the tropical rainforests here. Many are unique to the region. Moreover, the knowledge of their healing properties is older than recorded history. According to the legends, Ayurveda or the knowledge of life was developed in India almost 3000 years ago. By the 3rd century BC, The Emperor Ashoka had established free healthcare and veterinary centers based on Ayurveda across his vast empire. In the 1st century AD, the venerated physician Charaka recorded the applications of 350 pharmaceutical species in India's first written medical treatise, the Charaka Samhita. This became the foundation of a vast repository of knowledge systems that depended on the curative properties of plants and other natural substances 
most of these systems are still in practice today. Some continue to form part of the folklore of rural and tribal communities all over the country. Others, like Ayurveda, Yunani and Siddha, developed into scientifically acknowledged medical practices with well-defined theoretical foundations and are well documented in the ancient texts of the Shastras. India's indigenous medical culture is one of the most sophisticated in the world. These systems have been known to permanently cure chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes and arthritis, for which allopathic medicine has so far been unable to find any permanent solution. If you go to any allopathic doctor, he cannot eliminate the root of the problem. But in our form of medicine, it not only arrests the symptoms, but also cures it from the root of the problem. India is also perhaps the only country outside of China that has preserved its pharmaceutical heritage almost intact. Over the years, indigenous medical knowledge has been supported by extensive clinical research and testing and is considered compatible with modern medical practice. In fact, India is said to be perfected and indulged very much in, in a medicine system. They codified, systematically organized and provided a very sound, I mean, concept, philosophical explanation, which now the modern scientists are finding it almost, you know, much modern than what the modern medical science understood. So you'll find the world over that the revival of interest and use of the traditional system of medicine, particularly they are focusing on Ayurveda, then Chinese system. Today, there are registered practitioners of these systems with proper qualifications from recognized institutions. But for the vast majority of people in India, Healthcare practices are dependent on knowledge that has been orally transmitted through generations. In most cases, the local Ved or Hakim provides the first level of intervention in primary healthcare to rural communities. Tangamani is the first person the Siddharbeta villagers think of when they feel unwell. They know and trust her and are sure she will find the right herbs to make them better, whether it is a headache, a fever, or a more serious complaint. <laughs> Tirumaya is a folk healer, a Vishyabed, who specializes in treating snake bites and other poisonous insect stings. He accepts no payment for consultation, only a few rupees for the herbal antidotes he provides. And though some of his methods might seem somewhat unorthodox to the urban skeptic, his patients, like Krishnappa from Ramnagara village, are willing to testify to the efficacy of his cures. I was bitten by a snake, but the treatment at the local hospital did not heal my wound. Since one week, I have been taking a plant drug and some oil given by Thirumaiya Appa to be applied in the affected area. I couldn't stand up earlier, but now the wound is healing. Thirumaiya prepares the antidotes himself, just as his father taught him to. Typically, he will pass his skills on to his daughter, who will take over the practice when he is too old to carry on. There are folk healers like Thangamani and Thirumaya in every part of the country, each practicing their own unique form of healing based in the local flora. In the deciduous forests of the northeast, rich with diverse plant life, Sati Biola of the Garo Hills prepares her brews and potions from Himalayan wild plants collected and sold at the local village markets. Residents of these isolated mountain villages of the northeast, with limited access to modern hospitals, have immense faith in folk healers.
In the tropical rainforests of the Ghats, the Khanis are the custodians of an invaluable reserve of herbal lore. This nomadic clan live in the forested hill tracks of southwestern India. Their tribal physician, the Palti, uses a combination of drugs and ritual mantras in his treatments. He believes that impure blood is the root cause of all illness and prescribes a treatment known as sudorification for his patient. This is an aromatic steam bath, much like the sauna, made with extracts from some 68 medicinal herbs that literally sweats out the problem. A week of steam therapy together with a course of orally administered drugs and the patient is well enough to go home. My family is a family of physicians. I make my own medicines for various kinds of diseases, asthma, stomach problems, body ache. All my remedies are based on plant leaves, mainly oils, which is used for headaches and eye ache. India is one of the few places where we can find most pharmaceutical plant species important to both modern and traditional medicine. Most folk healers collect the raw materials for their remedies themselves, but many of the ingredients are becoming harder to find. My name is Dasamutuchak from Turkunahalli in Karnataka. This whole plant, including the root, should be crushed and then put in an earthen pot and boiled. The steam can cure infectious diseases. This is known as wild pepper. In the early days, it was found abundantly, but now it is very scarce. My name is D.S. Sidaya, resident of Turgahalli in Karnataka. From my father's time, we have been using this herb, Satavari, which is very good for pregnant women and even children. For children, it helps in digestion and against malnutrition. Nowadays, due to deforestation, these plants have become very scarce. This has made the development, conservation and preservation of the country's flora a top national priority. Government departments, non-governmental organizations and some private corporations are now focusing on the preservation of these varieties. An important aspect of this work is the identification of conservation sites. Most medicinal and aromatic plants are cultivated in their natural habitat to allow the evolutionary process to continue unhindered. The rarer, more delicate species are raised in special nurseries and herbariums. Botanical gardens in many parts of the country also provide a simulated environment where plants can be studied in their natural surroundings, while the most frail and slow-growing varieties are given a head start in the controlled conditions of the laboratory. Such conservation efforts also include the storage of genetic materials for propagation at a later date. Gene banks have been set up in different places to hold specimens collected from all over the country. These long-term methods are vital safeguards against the extinction of life-saving plants. But growing more plants is simply not enough. For conservationists like Mohan Karnad of the Forest Department, it also means educating the people about the value of these plants. What we are looking at is Conservation, uh, medicinal plant conservation area, management and maintenance, outreach activities, maybe nursery or maybe certain activities like uh, uh, income generation activities, uh, like uh, women health self-help group and also uh, this uh, community action to involve the community in the conservation program. The benefit is twofold. Degraded forests are being replenished with medicinal plant varieties and village communities who manage and protect these sites earn a fair income from the sale of this vital forest produce. 
some non-governmental organizations like the Foundation for the Revitalization of Local Health Traditions, or FRLHT, have taken on the task of informing the public about the cultivation and uses of these plants. The aim is to ensure that the benefit of India's rich pharmaceutical heritage percolates back to the people from whom it came. This Bangalore-based NGO has an extensive village outreach program to teach local communities how to grow and use common shrubs for their day-to-day -day healthcare needs. The young and old alike are drawn into the conservation network as they tend and manage their own herb gardens. Srinivas works for the conservation program at the Reeds Nursery in Bangalore, where one of his duties involves providing saplings free of cost to the villagers. Uh, we are distributing about uh, 17 to 20 species to the home herbal gardens and they grow the plants by taking the plants from here to their gardens. And uh, after uh, one year, they can use the plants for their primary health care needs. And uh, we mainly concentrate on conservation of the medicine plants so that we are propagating the medicinal plants because we have to conserve. So conservation through propagation of medicinal plants. The schoolyard, a back veranda, an open field become impromptu classrooms for a lecture demonstration on the healing capacity of a familiar succulent. Part of the education program involves teaching local residents about the commercial potential of these plants to further reinforce the conservation effort. India is recognized as a primary global resource for both medicinal species and the healthcare systems they support. And this information is now being made accessible beyond local communities or even the rest of the country to larger world markets. A first step in this direction has been the creation of a comprehensive database of indigenous medicinal plants at FRLHT. Generating some 77,000 computer records, the inventory links names in Sanskrit and vernacular languages to their botanical classification, with illustrations of each species for easy identification. It also maps their distribution and habitat to facilitate conservation and cultivation. With special reference to farmers, the database includes valuable guidelines on seed collection and storage, as well as information on marketing and pricing. This is meant to help actually uh, give this information to various community-based organizations working in the area of growing these plants so that they can uh, involve local communities in growing these and turn these into income generation schemes. That's the focus of that activity. Of course, that information could be used also by the pharmaceutical industry and uh, others. This placement of traditional healing practices into a modern context has proved enormously successful for the Kani tribals in South India. Scientists from the Tropical Botanical Garden Research Institute, TBGRI, at Trivandrum, noticing their apparently unflagging stamina, launched an investigation into the tribal habit of chewing a plant, commonly known as Arogyapacha, that grew abundantly in the vicinity. The result was a scientific breakthrough. Researchers isolated an active ingredient that enhanced human energy. It provided the basis of the formula for the tonic Jeevani that is today being produced and marketed by a well-known pharmaceutical company. This is the first ever commercial partnership between a manufacturing concern and an indigenous people, where proceeds from licensing and royalties from Jeevani have been reimbursed to the community that kept the secret alive for centuries. 
Dr. Rajeshekaran from TBGRI told us that they had experimented with the Arogya Bacha plant and had given the medicine formula to a pharmaceutical company in Coimbatore. They have sold it for a price and one part will be given to us, that is rupees 5 lakhs. The government finally gave us the money in 1998. The Jeevani experience has highlighted a need for greater research and development efforts in the area of traditional medicine. It also provides a model for spreading the benefits of India's traditional knowledge beyond their local application and at the same time creating value for the community that generates them. The patenting of such indigenous knowledge will help fight the increasing biopiracy of India's traditional wealth and wisdom. We should forge relationships not only within India but outside to take it forward. We must also ensure that the knowledge might sometimes come from the most unexpected quarters like tribes and so on and so forth, etc. We must create benefit sharing exercises with them. And also our intellectual property laws have to be amended in such a way that we give due respect to this traditional knowledge. In this direction, the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, and its affiliated labs around the country are working on ancient formulae to make them relevant to current needs. In addition, they have started an ambitious drug discovery program that capitalizes on the rich biodiversity and the millennia-old traditional systems of medicine. Plants, fungi, bacteria, marine organisms and insects are being systematically scoured for novel molecules that might have therapeutic or even insecticidal properties. So far, almost 400 new formulae have been developed here and are in the process of being patented. Yeah, the main aim is definitely to develop new drugs. Uh, we may take leads from Ayurveda, for, for that matter, any traditional system of medicine or any other system, it may be ethnobotanical system, a tribal system or household remedies from wherever you get the information. The other source of drugs could be the plants collected in a random manner. In the private sector also, many Indian and multinational drug companies besides producing herbal drugs are investing crores in research to validate the efficacy of many more traditional medicines. India's natural and intellectual resources hold enormous potential for creating wealth. And as global consumer trends turn full circle, Indian herbal medicine has become big business. The entire world is moving towards herbal products today. You find it happening all over, whether it is Japan, Europe, US and so on. The current uh, demand on herbal products is of the order of 80 billion dollars. It is likely to reach 5 trillion dollars by 2020. And I personally believe that because of our richness of biodiversity and traditional knowledge, we can have a significant market share of all this. The marketplace is already showing signs of this trend. Old remedies and tonics have assumed a newer, more customer-friendly identity. Cosmetic companies are increasingly relying on indigenous recipes from natural ingredients to promote a range of personal care products. Even in the processed foods industry, Traditional condiments and seasonings are now displayed in attractive, easy-to-use packaging that suit changing lifestyles. At first sight, the urban herbal healthcare syndrome may seem far removed from the village courtyard and the tribal medicine man, but it is only by combining these forces, the traditional and the everyday, with the modern and the innovative, that India's unique natural and intellectual heritage will endure. And as a new millennium unfurls, it seems fitting to once more acknowledge our debt to the natural world, to renew our pledge to protect and collaborate with its infinite variety of species, 
enriching our lives with the benefit of its ancient wisdom that will in time be passed on to generations that wait to be born. Bye, you